Begotten. I want to clear up some confusion about the word begotten because some people think it means birthed, like Jesus was birthed. That doesn't mean that. So let's take a look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now right there on the screen, I've got the Greek there. The Greek is monogenes. It means only and it means kind. Unique, only, one of a kind. That's how we need to read this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unique, one-of-a-kind son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's begotten, unique, one-of-a-kind. Now, notice, I just want to point this out, unique, one-of-a-kind. Notice how Hebrews 11 uses this for Isaac. Pick it up in Hebrews 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. Now, pause right there. When we think about that, we say, well, only begotten son. Didn't Abraham have Ishmael before he had Isaac? Yeah, that's true. So why is Isaac given the title his only begotten son? Because it's his only unique, one-of-a-kind son uh, of the covenant heir. All right, God established Isaac as the unique, one-of-a-kind son to be the covenant heir. Not Ishmael would be the covenant heir. Isaac would be the covenant heir. That's why Isaac is attributed this word begotten, his only begotten son, his only unique, one-of-a-kind son to be the covenant heir. And Isaac is a type of Christ. If we keep reading back in verse 18, it was he to him, it was said, in Isaac your descendants shall be called He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. See, you have to understand this. From Abraham's perspective, Isaac was dead. He's He's about to slay him. He was obedient all the way to the end. He lifts up the knife. He's about to slay him. And then the angel of the Lord says, Stop. I know that you obey me. I know that you love me. So from Abraham's perspective, Isaac was dead, but God figuratively raised him up by stopping Abraham doing that. That's why Isaac is a type of Christ. Now, Christ would go all the way through and go through the, 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 the death, but he would be raised again. So that's begotten for Isaac. Take a look at this in Acts 13, 29. When they had carried out all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead... And for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers that God has fulfilled this promise to our children in that he raised up Jesus as it was also written in the second Psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Aha, very interesting. If you see the flow of that text there, you see that Psalms 2 right there at the very end, today I have begotten you, is talking about the resurrection. Back on the screen, take a look at it closely. Look at the purple that I have in verse 30. But God raised him from the dead, jump down to verse 33, that God has fulfilled this promise to our children in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm, as it is also written, you are my son, today I have begotten you. See, today is a specific day. That's the third day. He was raised according to the scriptures. So that word begotten, and let's go back to Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms uh, because begotten means to bring forth, to bear. This is by God the Father. Look at Psalms 2.7. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. That word begotten in the Hebrew now is yalad, it's to bring forth to bear. So 
God brings forth his son at the resurrection, raises him from the dead. I know Christ has the power to lay down his life and to lift up his life, but today is the resurrection day. That's begotten. So begotten in John 3.16, unique, only, one-of-a-kind, unique son, his only one of a unique son, and but today I have begotten you, again, going back to Psalms, that's the Hebrew, bring forth. He was brought forth from the grave. Now, notice this, Hebrews 5, 5 to 6, one little last scripture that I want to point out, very powerful here. Hebrews 5, 5 to 6, so also Christ did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest, but he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you, again, Psalms 2, 7, just as he also says in another passage, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. See, Melchizedek, if you look at that, Melchizedek does not have a genealogy. He has no beginning or no end. He just appears on the scene. That's why he's a type of Christ. He's not Christ. He's a type of Christ. And Christ always has existed. He always has existed. So today I have begotten you is when on Resurrection Sunday, Christ becomes our high priest. Christ becomes our high priest. Today I have begotten you. And he has the authority and the, the wherewithal to be our representative. He intercedes for us in the heavenly places. He can, he can intercede for us. He knows what it means to suffer and to be afflicted. And so that's why he can represent us and, and, and it's an encouragement to us. Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. Now we have an entire series for you that will take you through the events that must take place before Christ returns. Now it's not a time to fear, it's a time to be ready. God wants his people ready. I hope you join us.